being a part of the Gloria Day community. We're glad you're here. If you're watching via YouTube, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications for new videos. If you're watching via Facebook, like and share this on your wall. Be sure to visit, like, and follow our Facebook page for more posts, shares, and upcoming events and videos. Curious to learn more about our ministry? Visit our website, GloriaDay.com. We've got podcasts, archive sermons and worships, activities for the family, and more. Thanks for being a part of the Gloria Day community. We're glad you're here.
morning, Gloria Day community. Welcome to worship. I am Pastor Carrie, and I am so glad to be here with you all today. I hope you are all having a safe and wonderful 4th of July weekend. Whether you have been a member for Gloria Day for many years or have never even stepped through its doors, we are so glad to have you here in this online space with us. Know that you are welcome here. So take a second and introduce yourself in the comment boxes and chat with one another and be present to this worship. Today we will hear from the Gospel of Matthew about a call that Jesus places on all of our lives to be in beautiful community together, to share in burdens so that all may find rest. But I'll wax eloquently about that a lot more later. As we get started, please note that we will be practicing communion today, so if you wish to participate, feel free to get your elements ready, whatever form of bread and wine that is, during this first song. Thanks for being here. Chains are gone 
Happy 4th of July weekend to you. This weekend is a great time to think about our nation with gratefulness and with eyes open to see the many wonderful things about our country and to see the things that will still require our attention in regards to equality and justice for all. Whether you're young or old or something in between, we're all an important part in our national community and in the discussions that are going on. And there's such a beauty in traveling together through life and learning from each other because we bring our own uniqueness, each of us, our own uniqueness to the human conversation. It's one of the parts of guiding small groups that I love the most. It's just seeing the wisdom of the group being shared and people noticing commonalities and parts of their journey that um, they can support each other in. It's, it's just a beautiful thing. Today I'd like to lead you in a brief loving-kindness meditation. And like the citizens of any nation, we can choose each day to be a source of love for the world. So this morning, join me in praying for ourselves, for someone you're close to, and for the entire human family. Let's start with a few deep centering breaths. And then you can gently close your eyes. And now visualize yourself and repeat, repeat these phrases silently. May I find peace and be truly happy. May I be healthy in body and mind. May I have the strength to walk through the challenges I face. May I be filled with loving kindness. Now visualize someone you're close to and say these phrases to them. May you find peace and be truly happy. May you be healthy in body and mind. May you have the strength to walk through the challenges you face. May you be filled with loving kindness. Finally, visualize all human beings and say these phrases to them. May you find peace and be truly happy. May you be healthy in body and mind. May you have the strength to walk through the challenges you face. May you be filled with loving kindness. When you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. As we think about our nation this weekend, I'd encourage you to think of your unique part of our national community. Our presence of love and inclusion is needed now more than ever for the good of the entire world.
Dear friends, let us pray. As we enjoy this 4th of July national holiday weekend, dear God, we pray for rest, we pray for healing, we pray for release, we pray for wholeness. Remind us of our calling, our common creed, that all people are created equal. Inspire us to ensure that all your children enjoy life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Help us to be profoundly grateful for our freedom and security, to never take these gifts for granted, to not use them selfishly, but rather to use them for the betterment of all. True freedom comes from you, Almighty God. Freedom from sin and death. Freedom for loving our neighbors as ourselves. May we help shine the light of Jesus Christ throughout our country and throughout our world. Amen. This morning's reading comes from the Gospel according to Matthew. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here ends the reading. So I'd just like to start this message by saying once again that last part of our reading. Jesus says, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So this has been one of my favorite passages from Scripture for a really long time. It's a comforting verse to remember in the midst of pain and exhaustion. But whenever I hear this verse, I actually hear it in the voice of our former bishop, Steve Delzer, who said it at my ordination. I remember him reading that verse to me and even without a thought, just taking this big, deep breath. I remember standing by the altar at Gloria Day and being nervous about what was ahead for me in this call as pastor. And in this moment, these were reassuring words that the yoke that Jesus gives is easy and his burden is light. But in reading these words today, I can't help but think of all those who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. I think of the medical professionals who have been working so hard to care and heal, to research and experiment. I recently watched a YouTube video of a doctor who made a compilation of videos where she checked in and talked about her personal experience with COVID-19 since March and all of the work that she had to do. I watched as she spoke of that first case that she had of that patient being cured and being sent home and the joy of his release. And I saw as she recalled losing other patients. The bags under her eyes got grayer and bigger, but she continued to hold on to optimism and hope. She actually showed off a plant that she had been given by a local shop owner just for, as she called it, doing her job. I think of those who are continuing to work and put themselves at risk for others and for their incomes. For those who are carrying the heavy burden of working at the grocery store, who are able to provide us with the necessities we need from behind masks and plastic sheeting and glass partitions. 
At this, the beginning of July, I think about this past month of June when our LGBTQ plus siblings celebrated pride. I think of the heavy burdens they have been forced to carry, the burdens of secrecy and fear, the burdens of being unaccepted, the burdens of being hurt and killed for who they are and who they love. I think of our siblings in this world who are black, indigenous, people of color, and the burdens they have had to carry. The burdens that we have placed on them with how our society has been structured. The systemic burdens that have valued these lives less than others. The burdens that have brought them less education, more fear, and the rules that must be followed that I personally have never had to think about. Rules like what to do when you're pulled over, rules about what to wear and how to act and how to speak. I think of the burdens of grief that many have carried over the senseless deaths of their loved ones. I think of us all as we continue to navigate this pandemic and quarantine. I think of those who have lost jobs, those who have lost loved ones. I think of those who have lost their sense of agency and safety. I think of those whose mental health has been brought to even more challenges because of the isolation we've all been facing. I think of those of us who are weary from the restrictions Weary from being unable to live life as we once knew it. Weary of being unable to gather together for family celebrations, for simple get-togethers with friends, and even for worship. And I don't know about you, but I feel weary and exhausted. It feels like it's been years since we've had our normal lives. It feels like it's been years since I've been able to spend time with my family without worrying about our health or standing in glory a day and greeting people as they come to worship. It's during these times of exhaustion that I am especially grateful for Jesus' words in this passage. Come to me, all that are weary and carrying burdens, and I will give you rest. In times of exhaustion and in times of fear and uncertainty, I think it's really easy for us humans to head right into anger and numbness. We are upset at the rules and regulations. We are angry at the systemic injustice that we have had to deal with our whole lives. We are outraged at the mistreatment of our loved ones because of who they are and who they were created to be. Anger can be a powerful force, a force that leads us into action out of complacency. Anger can be righteous and bring about change. But when we live in anger, we can so easily become destructive to ourselves and to our communities. It is because of this that Jesus' words are so helpful for me. Come to me, and I will give you rest. And Jesus does not say this as some sort of life coach, as someone who suggests time away, or a vacation, or a day of self-care, maybe. Jesus tells us imperatively, come to me, and I will give you rest. When we are carrying heavy burdens, and when we are weary, we need time to rest. Before Jesus asks us to do anything, we are told that he will grant us rest. Rest to remember who we are. Rest to restore the life within us. Rest to rejuvenate us. And we need this time, this time of refreshment. But when this rest is over, Jesus calls us to take his yoke upon us and learn from him. Jesus calls us to be Christ-like, for in this we will find rest for our souls. I wonder what the world would be like if we responded as Christ responds? What if we responded with hope and love and vulnerability as Jesus did? What would the world look like if we did the hard work of finding the real truth, of taking off the band-aids that look like peace and working for true justice? What would the world look like if rather than placing the burdens of injustice on the shoulders of some, we instead all joined to carry it until it is so light that it need not be carried by any? In all this, I think of the things that Gloria Day is doing. I think of our welcome statement and how we work to show love to all who walk through the doors or join us online or join us at the Church Without Walls. I think of the outreach we do with threads and backpack programs and the small pantries outside of our building. I think of the service projects that our youth participate in and the quilts that have been made. I think of all those who have made masks, who have extended kindness, who have helped to share the burden. I think of all the ways that we have been the church without walls these last few months, and it's a beautiful picture. And while there is more work to do in this world, we have good news for whatever is ahead of us. Because Christ's yoke is easy, and Christ's burden is light. Rather than the burdens we so easily place on one another, Christ holds truth, hope, vulnerability, and love. 
May we work for the true iterations of these things, for truth with a capital T, for true justice and true hope and true love for all, not just for some. May we carry one another's burdens in a beautiful community and give one another rest. May we walk into the world as Christ did, with hope and love and vulnerability. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give thanks for the election of Pastor Dave Berg as Gloria Day's next senior pastor. May he lead us into a future as we continue to live and grow in community together. We pray for Norm Gardner's mother, Marion, and her hospice staff as they figure out how to manage her situation. We lift up Huang Bui and her family as her sister, Gam, has moved into comfort care following major heart attacks. Be with Gam's husband, Nick, and their two sons during this time. We give thanks for Warren Williams as he celebrated his 90th birthday last week, and for Phil Welvang in celebrating his 95th birthday. Be with the family of Millie Knepke as they mourn her death and celebrate her life. We pray for Sam Anderson, Chad, Darlene Rashavi, and all those we now invite you to type in the comments below. God of creation, we pray for healing, hope, and restoration in these times we find ourselves in. Help us to see you and every person in this world and help us to treat others with compassion, kindness, and love. God of peace, we pray for our nation on this 4th of July weekend. May our local, state, and national leaders govern with wisdom, justice, and care for your creation. May we co-create an America where we live into the ideal of liberty and justice for all. God of healing, we pray for the medical professionals who continue to lead the charge against the coronavirus pandemic. We also pray for the frontline workers, cooks, grocery workers, truck drivers, post office employees, and many others who have kept our community running through this pandemic. God of comfort, we ask that you be with those who have been unemployed or furloughed during this pandemic. May they find sustenance and hope during these uncertain times. Gracious God, we pray for all these things, in addition to those typed in the comments, in your holy name. Amen. Friends, as we gather here this morning, we know that our Lord Jesus Christ joins us wherever we happen to find ourselves. The God who created us is able to transcend time and place. And so on this holiday weekend, perhaps we're at home. Perhaps we are visiting friends. Perhaps we're in a camper or a cabin. Wherever we are at, wherever you are at, no that our Lord Jesus is there with you. As Christ was present with the disciples on the night in which they had their last meal together, Christ is indeed present with all of us and is at our tables. And so at this time, I invite you, if you wish, to participate with us in the meal of communion. Again, knowing that while we may not be able to be physically present with one another, we are still a community. We are still God's people gathered together and know that the promise Jesus gives us through this meal most definitely still stands. In the night in which Jesus was with his disciples, the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, ordinary bread. He gave thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after the supper was ended, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it to all of them to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us together pray the words that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends, if you are with your family, with your friends, with your roommates, with your camping mates, your cabin mates, we invite you at this time to consider communing one another, serving one another the bread and the wine. If you happen to be watching and, and, and taking part in this service today by yourself, know that you are not alone. Christ is with, with you. The great community of believers is at least with you in spirit. And know that this is the body of Christ that was given for you. And that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Think about the presence of Christ in this meal, at your table, and in your life as we hear this next song. of the day we'll walk in love but whatever comes my way gonna walk in love brother sister let us walk in love oh gonna walk in love singing hallelujah turns his back gonna walk in love my enemy attacks gonna walk in love when I feel I don't belong gonna walk in love with no strength to carry on gonna walk in love brother sister let us walk in love Sharing stories of how we connect. Community Talk. Hey, community people. Celebrate good times. Come on. This week we are highlighting celebrations. So many people are being creative in sharing care and connection for celebrations. On June 7th, 
Members drove to graduating high school seniors' homes to cheer them on and show them love and support. Snail mail is making a good old comeback. With cards and special moments being shared for those celebrating weddings, anniversaries, and birthdays. My family and friends sent me birthday greetings on strips of paper, so I have this paper chain hanging in my house. We also have pen pals who are sharing everyday celebrations and news with each other through the mail. As we celebrate a national holiday, it brings to mind on how we all celebrate together. You have seen the staff and VBA kids wearing these cool shirts, and now it's your turn. We have a live order form on our website for you to order your own community swag. Happy ordering! You don't need a building to be the church. What a way to celebrate community and look stylish in the meantime. We are glad to partner with Gallant Fit Apparel and continue to build community through this project. Send me your stories of how you're celebrating community at Krista M at Gloria-DEI.com. We are blessed to be a blessing. See you here next time for more Community Talk. Peace ever, joy ever following you. Light ever, love ever radiating through. Hope ever, faith ever, strengthening you. Life ever, breath ever, nourishing you. And everywhere you go, may you always be home. And everyone you meet be messengers of peace. Let your light shine through. Let your heart ever be true. in wisdom, sharing all that's good. Peace ever, joy ever, following you. Light ever, love ever, radiating through. And everywhere you go, may you always be home. And everyone you meet be messengers of peace may we choose courageously may we hope defiantly may we love outrageously and walk on lightly in humility beauty and laughter ever filling you friendship affection surrounding you thank you again for joining us for worship today at gloria day lutheran in rochester minnesota we're so glad that you uh, found us and participated today. I want to thank you for all the ways that you are a blessing to our congregation. Again, during this time of the pandemic, we want to encourage all of you to continue to be community, to reach out to one another, to watch out for one another, uh, drop somebody a line, give them a phone call, whatever you can do to help brighten others' day. Hope that you've been having a very blessed holiday weekend and want to invite you to come join us again next Sunday right here at 9 a.m. Take care.
Hi, my name is Joshua Puente, and I'm the Operations and Outreach Coordinator here at Gloria Day. And we just want to say thank you for your support. Right now, I'd like to share about our custodian, John. He's been amazing at keeping our building clean and disinfecting the rooms after small groups use our spaces. And summer is usually this time of deep cleaning. And wow, are the floors shiny. All of the carpets are shampooed and he's been working really hard to maintain our building since March. This goes a long way for the ministries at Gloria Day. Yes, we are at home right now and we don't know when it's gonna be safe to gather in large groups again. And yes, we are a church without walls. And our building is a tool to help serve our community. So if you're interested in having a small group gathering of 10 people or less in the fireside room, contact the church office for details and a reservation. With that, we wanna make sure that our building expenses are kept up and we are doing everything we can to keep costs down. And a huge thanks to John who works at keeping our building clean and disinfected and ready for small groups and for when we get to gather together again. From our backpack program to our pantry, threads, VBA, Mission Sundays, and our community partners like Family Promise, Rochester Public Schools, Channel One Food Bank, and everyone else we partner with. Our building is a tool we use to serve our community. And if you get a chance, reach out to John and thank him for his work. We know he'll appreciate it and he might even share about the weather with you too. So thank you for your continued generosity and supporting the ministries at Gloria Day. Please know that your financial generosity makes our work a reality. From outreach with our building to our community friends to worship opportunities like this morning and so much more. Your contributions help us to share the love of Christ throughout the world. You can give online, send a contribution to church, or text to give at the number on the screen. Again, thank you for continuing to be the Church Without Walls, for giving abundantly during these times, and thank you for sharing your hearts, your prayers, and your financial donations to the ministries at Gloria Day. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.